Hello people, uh, my name's Davey, this is Davey Explains and today we're going to cover um, something about Scottish independence. In this series we are going to be talking about Scotland's economy, its finances and what Brexit might do and these might be positive reasons for leaving, for Scotland leaving the UK and rejoining the European Union. I don't care if you agree with me or not. It's just, I would like you to be able to understand the issue at heart. If you agree with me, then that's good. If you disagree with me, well, I'd love to hear why not down in the comments. Or the doobly-doo, or whatever you call it on YouTube. I don't know. I'm quite new here, so let's see what goes on, shall we? Um, so first off, I'd like to talk, when we look at Scotland's independence, I'd ask you, what makes a, for a prosperous nation? Well, there's loads of key factors that can introduce it, but there are five main ones. Number one, the natural wealth formation. So we're talking about fossil fuel wealth, mineral wealth, the natural landscapes, land mass, the quality of farmland and the size and productivity of terrial, territorial waters. And this is the one we're going to focus on today, Scotland's natural wealth. The success of, um, success of this is insane. The natural wealth of a nation can form a bedrock of economic success. I mean, if you want proof of this, have a look at Australia and how wealthy they are. Have a look at South Africa and how well rich uh, the people that were running South Africa got from gold and diamonds. Uh, having a natural wealth to rely on makes it easier for a nation to properly invest in developing other factors needed for a successful nation. This is the case for Scotland. So how do we compare with the rest of the UK and even with Europe? Well, we currently, at the time of recording, have over 70% of the UK's uh, fish landings, which means that 70% of the fish that you can eat in the UK comes from Scottish water. We possess 8.4% uh, of, of the UK's population, according to the last census. This might change, however, because of a number of key factors, be it the Brexit vote, the Scottish independence vote, and also the fact that the UK's got a, all right, the population's starting to slow down, but we've still got a rising population on a very small, very damp, wet uh, group of islands. So you can expect that figure to slightly rise. Uh, we have 34% of the UK's natural wealth. Uh, we own 32% of the UK's landmass area and 62% of its um, offshore mainland area offshore maritime area. So not quite so we as some of the unionists would have us believe. We have 10% of Europe's wave power potential. This is due to the fact we've got so many islands, particularly the Outer Hebrides, Orkney and Shetland. Um, Scotland's surrounded by these small islands and there's hundreds of them. Setting up wave power would not be a problem. Uh, we also provide, provide over 60% of the UK's timber population. Think about that next time you go to Asda. <laughs> Sorry, not Asda, Ikea. We have an estimated 25% of Scotch of uh, Europe's offshore wind and tidal power too. Um, and we have 40% of the resources of the UK as a whole when it comes to this. So we, we have a lot of renewable energy. In fact, Scotland's been one of the first countries in the world where all of our electricity comes from renewable sources, be it nuclear or more eco-friendly ones, but still renewable power that doesn't create carbon dioxide and greenhouse gases, which given the situation of climate change right now is becoming incredibly important. We have 26% of the renewable energy and 90% of the UK's hydropower, which means, like I said, all this renewable clean energy, yummy, 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 it's kind of what we all want. We also, thanks to our amazing locks, and seriously, if you're up in Scotland, once the pandemic ends, go up and see some of them. They are fantastic. Um, you, we've got 90% uh, of the UK's fresh water. Yeah, 90% of the UK's fresh water. When Scotland leaves the UK, there is going to have to be a serious trade deal done with Scotland and in Scotland and Westminster over the water because, well, to be frank with you, Scotland gets an awful lot of rain and we keep an awful lot of fresh water. Loch Ness is absolutely beautiful. I'm sorry I've butchered the word loch. I'm not native to Scotland. 
Uh, Loch Lomond is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, if you ever get a chance, go and visit. Um, go and visit Balak. Um, it's you, you just won't regret it. Trust me, it is absolutely spectacular and beautiful. Uh, we also have ninety percent, ninety six percent of the UK's crude oil and sixty three of its natural, sixty three percent of its natural gas production. So for the energy that isn't so clean, we actually have more of it and. The most damning thing about how much oil Scotland's got? In the 70s, uh, Westminster had a report done by Lord Macron called the Macron Report. The findings of which were so controversial they kept it secret for 35 years, and only in the last five years has it been published unredacted. If you get a chance, I believe the National.Scot has the full report printed for you and it's not behind a paywall. Go and give that report a read. You will not believe the extent of how much oil Scotland's got and how much of it they have kept secret from the UK to give from Scotland sorry to give you an idea of how bad it is um, it's really funny whenever Scot whenever the case needs to be that Scotland needs to vote with England on something you'll find that you'll find these reports saying Scotland's running out of oil whenever it's ah Scotland can do what it wants oh all of a sudden we found a new oil field yeah we've already know where they are the thing is is that Scotland has got more oil, surprisingly, than most of its European neighbours due to how much of it they've got under the North Sea, which is insane when you think about it. But here's, here's a couple of observations made on Scotland's natural wealth. Um, for a start, uh, Scotland's natural wealth could be one of the key foundations of Scotland's future prosperity. <sighs> as an independent nation, it's unreasonable to believe that a country as wealthy, naturally speaking, as Scotland uh, wouldn't thrive if it was to gain the power to manage these resources for its benefit, rather than them being diluted and spread out across the rest of the UK. This, unfortunately, uh, wealth distribution is still reserved to Westminster. It shouldn't be, right? Why would you let your neighbour control what socks you wore on a morning as you, before you're going to work? Scotland's wealth is something to be stewarded and safeguarded for future generations too. A lot of people will tell you, oh, we'll just sell the oil off and Scotland will be rich. We don't need to. The renewable, clean energy we can create using Scotland's natural resources means we don't even have to tap in for that oil. We really, really don't. We could use it to safeguard our economy for future generations instead of this slash and burn London mentality that we've had that has led us into two recessions in the last 20 years. So yeah, reason number one for Scottish independence, it's natural wealth. This is going to be part of a whole series which is going to be done week on week. I will however point out that for research in this video I have used a book called Scotland The Brief. Uh, it was written by Gordon McIntyre Kemp and it's a product of Business for Scotland. You can go and buy a copy of this book online if you don't want to hear me rambling on. So. Have a lovely evening, or uh, morning, or whatever the time is, wherever you're watching this. Please keep safe, keep at home, and when you're in public, please wear a mask. This pandemic is lethal. It will kill. It does kill. And frankly, we all need to keep safe. God bless you all. I've been Davey. You've been awesome. And let me know what you think down in the comments. If you want a link to the Macron report, I will, of course, put it in a doobly-doo. Bye for now.